Hello and good evening once again. Welcome to your premier news and current affairs program, The Trove, broadcast this and every Sunday from 2030 hours to 2100 hours on your favorite station, NRTV, on DSTV channel 288. I'm your host, Roderick Mashingaize, with my buddy, PJ Nagoli. PJ. How are you, sir? Fine, thanks. It's that time again where we get to share with Zimbabwe and the rest of the world interesting developments that are happening mainly in Tipo Chep, Zimbabwe and beyond the world. Yes. How was the week? The week was uh, slightly slower than what we have been seeing over the past two weeks. I think we are getting used now to what, have been, what has been happening. You know Zimbabwe, one thing trends at a time. So, yeah. True, 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 true. Aside from weekend out, dishing out uh, vehicles across the board, who, of course be speaking to political issues as we almost always do. Yes. And amongst those issues is uh, the ongoing demolition of illegally constructed houses and homes across the country. PJ. Yes. What, 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 what can you say about uh, the ongoing destruction of homes? Some of them quite beautiful, I must say. Yes, yes, what can yes. you say? I think, number one, it's quite unfortunate. That's the first thing I would say, that it's unfortunate to see uh, someone building up a property because a property in Zimbabwe is something that is very, very difficult to achieve given the economic status and the economic situation in the country. But it's unfortunate to see that one can be uh, the investment, everything that we've put in can just be demolished. At the same time, I don't want to sound to be, to come across as saying those guys are just too innocent. Some of these people actually knew that they were building on illegal land so that they are, so a part of the blame must go to them. But well, that not, PJ, I must cut you short there. We will give you an interview that was done by our own Sarah Makoni where she spoke to the Minister of local government and housing, that is uh, Honorable Winston Chitando, yes. explaining government's position regards the ongoing demolitions. Land belongs to government and it will be issued out at the appropriate time and with appropriate announcements being made. The mayor whispered to me earlier to say, oh yes, that's the same thing with the municipal land, which is in the same area. It will be issued out at the appropriate time with appro appropriate announcement being made. I don't want to come up as if you are attacking innocent people mm. because of the cost factor involved in yes. constructing. I've perused the Communal Lands Act, yes. where Section 4 explicitly gives or vest yes. all land, communal land that is, yes. in the president. Yes. So all the buildings that we see being constructed, those ones that are being demolished around Yodombo Shaba, and yes. in any rural community, mm. that land is vested in the, in president. the president. Yes. But that's the thing about uh, the law, Roderick. The general citizen in Zimbabwe does not know these things. So if one is buying a, a, a land, they don't look for the Communal Lands Act. What they simply are looking for is where to build their houses in order for them to house their families, number one. Number two, government must not be naive and government must not act stupid. Why? Because mm -hmm. we know about the issue of corruption in terms of land. Right. That is the core issue right here. The issue is about corruption in terms of selling this land. We are told that... Uh there was a whole precedent on Sabuku deals. Yes. Our Sabukus ascribing to themselves the powers mm. which they do not have yes. in terms of the Communal Lands yes. Act or any other act for mm. that matter. You know, the tradition is that uh, the Sabukus uh, preside over certain areas yes. where maybe they may control the allocation of certain pieces within the family or tribe that resides yes. there. But now they are going beyond that. Yes. Now selling out lands in areas such as Seke, yes. in areas such as Domboshava, yes. Mashingo, areas that are close to the cities. Now, we can demolish houses because they've been built on illegal land. Mm -hmm. But for as long as we do not cure the key issue at hand, which is corruption in terms of the distribution and selling of land, we're not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere indeed. Uh, we are sorry for those who are getting their properties demolished. And uh, unfortunately, the law is 
the law. If True. you are to build without due diligence mm. on areas which are reserved for other issues, you might find yourself losing your life's earnings and a home in the process. PJ, over and above this issue, last week we take matters out of Zimbabwe a yes. bit. There has been this issue that has been there internationally. Yes. South Africa successfully taking on Israel. Yes. To the ICJ. Yes. Winning in the process mm -hmm. and Israel being ordered to stop all atrocities mm. in Gaza, yes. in Palestine. Yes. We give you that clip where we hear Ambassador Naledi Pando speaking to the Palestinian communities. Many have been quibbling that the court did not use ceasefire, the word. But all the orders that they gave can only be acted upon if there is a ceasefire. The ICJ had confirmed that an occupying power cannot rely on the right to self-defense as stated in Article 51 of the UN Charter. It's not two equal free states fighting each other. It is an occupier fighting those they have occupied and essentially slaughtering them. If the case proceeds as we anticipate, and it is found that Israel committed genocide, all those who were complicit are as guilty as Israel. For the first time in 75 years, Israel is being held accountable by an institution. For the first time, we have opened up for the world to see. We, South Africa. PJ. Yes. You hear tough talking yes. foreign affairs minister of yes. South Africa, Naledi Panda, yes. saying as South Africa they are not going to stop and mm. they are urging all like minded countries to stop their apartheid and their attacks going on in the yes. Gaza. Your sentiments? Um, first and foremost, Washington is not happy with, with, uh, with Naledi Pando because she's been very, very tough on the worst and she announced her, her retirement yet she's, she'll be retiring in the months to come and I think Washington is happy because they are seeing a lady who has been tough on international relations in particularly to do with the West. On that note, America has seen through its House of Representatives mm. mooted, come up with a bill yes. to look and revisit yes. the bilateral relationship mm. with South Africa. Yes. The reasons for this bill are because South Africa is exceedingly yes. warming up to China and Russia, yes. which are enemies of America. Yes. And South Africa is an ally of these two nations, of mm. course, because of BRICS, your yes. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Now, do you think South Africa cares about the repercussions likely to visit them? I think they do, because if you look at the geopolitics of it, uh, America is supposed to be the first or second biggest trading partner of South Africa. Now, the numbers that Russia brings in into South Africa compared to the numbers of trading that are brought in by the United States cannot be compared because the United States is actually bringing in more numbers and more money into South Africa than Russia is doing. But South Africa seems to have been prepared. You had uh, Madame Pando there speaking, saying... Israel has since stopped these flights. They yes. weren't even bringing many people at all. And they've also stopped importing our grapes, which are the best in the world. Yes. So I'm sure South Africa had done its homework when it came to this decision. It had done its homework because you're looking at a South Africa that is gaining momentum in terms of geopolitics. You're looking at a South Africa that just hosted the BRICS summit uh, just a few months ago. Just last year, they hosted the BRICS summit. Given talking about BRICS, I, I, I was anticipating this move by South Africa because relations between, by the US, I mean, because relations between South Africa and China and Russia are getting stronger by the day. Please stay tuned for the second segment of your show, The Trove. Hello and welcome to the second segment of your premier current affairs program, The Trove. I am with my buddy PJ Nagoli and we are discussing issues to do with politics, international relations, diplomacy at home and abroad. PJ, when we left, we spoke about the issue to do with Israel mm. and the demolition. Yes. We now want to speak to a topical issue that took place this past week, only a few days back. Mm. The acting president, vice president, President, retired Dr. C. D. G. N. Chiwenga. He 
vindicating and coming out saying that what had been done by the Gays and Lesbian Association of Zimbabwe of canvassing mm. for uh, youthful people, as it were, the young people, through scholarships mm. on the basis of sexuality must stop because it goes against the Christian values and the moral values of Zimbabwe. Yes. Your sentiments on that statement? Uh, the statement, I think, expressed the kind of anger that uh, the general Zimbabwean has when it comes to this issue. But then again, we come back to the issue of legislation. Uh, the Criminal Law Act of 2006 does not criminalize sexual acts. It actually criminalizes sexual acts between men. The law of Zimbabwe criminalizes only same-sex marriages. Right. So there is a gap in our legislation. Let's go back to the entity in question that is offering scholarships on the basis of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. This is an entity, it's not a new entity to, to society. It's registered it's, as a private it's voluntary registered organization. As, as a, I mean, it sponsors a lot of things in Zimbabwe and government is aware of that. It's there in Milton Park, number exactly. 125, Colin Brenda. But government cannot do anything because there is a gap in legislation. So I think the ball is in parliament's courts to make a stand finally to say no where do we stand as a nation in terms of that we know that culturally societally it does not align with our african values under that, robert mugabe pj yes there was a clear stance he had mentioned it though there was no legislation yes that gays and lesbians are worse than pigs and dogs because these latter know yes they are they are, they are sexes yes what do you make of government's stance, apart from the later that we have seen yes. coming out, in terms of dealing with this issue decisively? Because what you've witnessed recently yes. in leisure sports, in universities, yes. I dare say even in churches, yes. people are coming out of the cupboards and you can now tell that people who used to uh, not want to show that they were queer or yes. gay yes. or LGBTQI community are now coming out openly. I, will, I always use a women's bathroom because could you imagine me being in a men's bathroom? As a transgender, there's nothing to say because when I was in a pick it up, it's for me, I'm a trans man. So I don't even wear maskets. I wear trousers and I act like a boy. My gender identity is different from the one that was assigned to me at birth. At birth I was assigned as male, but I identify as a woman. That's why I am a transgender woman. And everyone has a right to come forth and say, I have these unique issues. I must be protected. That's why we protect those who are protecting the rights even of animals. Um, I think now it's what is next now is to engage um, the president, the new president. Congratulations to him. Um, to engage him to have a more transparency approach. That's why I'm saying, you, you spoke of, of Robert Mugabe. The, the people, the issue b between Robert Mugabe and President Emerson Mnangagwa, people compare the two when it comes to this issue because President Mugabe was just focal about it. But guys, if you're just focal about it and you forget the legislation part of it, I think President Emerson Mnangagwa is better when it comes to is this issue because he knows even if he speaks about it, there is no legislation. I what remember when you was asked, uh, it was in an interview with Christian... I'm on top. Yes. CNN. Yes. He was clear that was it clear. is not his place. Yes. It's the law. It's the law. That forbids yes. same-sex marriage. Yes. And this law is a result of the collective effort of Zimbabweans because yes. it came through a referendum, referendum the 2013 yes. constitution. And yes. people we asked about this mm. issue and they said, no, we do not want this. But what you say is, what's lacking? Is an actual law, yes, like those laws that are in Uganda. Uganda, for, for say, you see, Museveni was very clear when it comes to this issue. We don't want this issue. I mean, he criminalized everything associating Ugandans to homosexuality, life imprisonment, to some, 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 in some that's what I'm saying. So, what do I think about government stance? I think this is a point where we get to differentiate government and party politics. I think Zanuk PF should take the lead on this one. It is the numbers in Pali. It should be the one that is leading in terms of this issue to speak to the issues to do with legislation. Let us criminalize it because society, culture does not allow it.
But they say that they are a minority and they've got also rights. That's what I'm saying. If we look at Section 56 of the Zimbabwean Constitution, the 2013 one that we're speaking about, mm -hmm. it speaks to how everyone is equal under the law. But it's not in terms of sexuality. Hey. South the South African one yes. then goes clear that everybody has got a right That's what I'm to saying. choice of... So... Ours should then... Ours should be clear because ours just speaks to gender, it speaks to sex. sex. It doesn't speak to sexual, sexual orientation. orientation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. see? Yeah. So there is a gap in our legislation that parliament, particularly the ruling party, because at this point, when we talk about legislation, it is, the ball is in ZANU-PF's court. And it being a constitutional question, yes. there must be a referendum of sorts. Yes. To go out there, ask people, just like should have happened in the issue to do with the death penalty. Yes. What do Zimbabweans think on this dicey sensitive issue? And what Zimbabweans decide should then yes. be the case, the will of the majority the of the people should prevail. But we need someone to start the conversation, someone who's already in the system. Hence I say, I dare to say, Zana PF should take a strong stance to do with this. PJ, uh, aside from this, we've had a development where three high-ranking generals, two-star generals mm. in the Zimbabwe Defense Forces are alleged to have siphoned millions or made off with millions of dollars in terms of a housing scandal mm. where they were inflating prices of uh, the houses that are due to them in terms of their conditions yes. of service. At times, we are told... We, we, the reports are there, are watched in the media. The story yes. was broke by news walks. Yes. It, it, in some instances, they were supposed to get houses in the range of maybe 400,000, but some were inflating the houses, according to the allegations, yes. to 4 million bucks. Your sentiments? I think it is one of those issues what, where I would equate corruption, uh, a pastor and, 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 and corruption are not supposed to be in the same sentence mm -hmm. because these are two institutions that are supposed to be clean and such is the state uh, uh, such is the stance when it comes to our military institutions they are so sensitive and have an impact that i think it is a black spot for for the army but i think i would commend uh, the leadership of our army in that mm -hmm. they dealt with the issue i mean Le lieutenant general sanya we are yes. coming out there we are told that the three generals have since uh, been set aside a bit i don't know whether it's suspension or whatever in military parlance yes and we have a copy of a press release yes. in response to that. We'll just read through it. Yeah. And it came on uh, the 16th of February, on Friday. Um, it, is, um, it says, open quote, the Zimbabwe Def Defense Forces wishes to reaffirm and reassure the public of its commitment to the rule of law, mm. discipline, presumption of innocence, and zero, and zero tolerance to corruption of whatever form and whatever level. Yes. The matter flagged by the news walks and other media outlets relating alleged corruption of three general officers is under investigation. Mm. It is sub judice and therefore still undergoing due legal process. Yes. The ZDF, however, notes that great concerns with great concern, sorry, attempts by news walks and other media outlets to peddle falsehoods about the organizations and individuals taking advantage of the alleged corruption matter currently under investigations. The public will be apprised of any developments and other outcomes in due course. This is from the spokesperson of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces yes. there. On that note, I'm afraid this marks the end of our second segment. Please be sure to join us for the third and final segment of your premier current affairs program, The Trove, where I get to discuss with my buddy, PJ Nagoli, on all topical issues. Hello and welcome, of course, uh, to your premier current affairs program, The Trove, broadcast this and every Sunday on DSTV channel 288. I'm your host, Roderick Mashingaize, with my buddy, PJ Nagoli. PJ, yes. this is the third and final segment. We can't discuss about The Trove without looking at developments that have been happening in the Triple C and Chamisa's Blue Movement. Yes. A bit silent this past week. But uh, we understand that uh, Charlton Wende is uh, scheduled to have uh, a discussion with uh, Heart and Soul's Dara, Dara Blessed next week, Thursday. Yes. Your sentiments on I, those I, two bodies? 
I don't think uh, it has been silent. They've been doing interfaces. All right. I think all of us are just waiting for Nelson Chamisa to come out and announce this thing. That, that's what we are, we are awaiting. Uh, regards to Charlton Wende coming out uh, to speak uh, on, on, on Heart and Soul's program, I think he made headlines the last week where he claimed or purportedly claimed that election funds of uh, election agents were stolen by, uh, allegedly by Amos, Amos Chibaya and Gift Siziba. So th that is particularly why people are so interested in what he has to say. He was also a leader in the then uh, MDC and then uh, C. The organizing secretary. Yes. Uh, sorry, yeah, but he is the one who is the Kwazana. Yes. Who took place, who, who replaced Chamisa in that uh, exactly. seat. So, the seat which belonged to Lenmo Jongwe in the first instance. Yeah. And on X, formerly Twitter PJ, mm. A lot of discussions going around this issue that uh, your Ostalo Siziva and uh, Amos, Amos Chibaya mm. going it alone to the exclusion of other people within the political party. We hear Fazi has been quiet on I this issue and this has also divided the party because in parliament we now hear there is the faction that is led by Jameson Timber, yes. which of course has got... Uh, you, um, Mateo, Castor Mateo, the yes. chairperson of the media mm -hmm. uh, committee. Your sentiments? I, I don't understand why people are shocked by the interfaces being ran by Amos Chibaya and Gift Siziba. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. take a look back. Who introduced the Triple C to the masses? It was Amos, Amos Chibaya and Gift Siziba. Mm -hmm. The question there, Roderick, should be, is it good politicking All by right. Nelson Chamisa to have exclusively two individuals going around the country representing you when you are saying you're running a democratic movement, you're introducing a democratic movement? One argument, PJ, has been that uh, there are a lot of sellouts in the party, so they will expose themselves out as... This goes on. So maybe these are the key lieutenants. But then is it good? Because you can't run a party with two individuals. That's what killed the triple C. And who is benefiting from all, all this confusion? You see, ZNPF benefits, of course, but then they lose at the end of the day. You speak of that issue, PJ. It brings us to the anniversary commemorations of the letter uh, uh, founder of the Movement for Democratic Change. Mr. Morgan Richard Changrai, yes. may his soul continue to rest in peace. Mm -hmm. You had discussions with uh, Mr. Douglas Monzora. Yes. Is the opposition political movement any better under the stewardship of the president, opposition leaders, when we compare it to the times of Morgan Changrai? No. It has died. The opposition movement has died uh, because we can't compare the times of Morgan Changirai to the times of the current crop of opposition political leaders that we have. In terms of popularity, Nelson Chamisa might be more popular than Morgan Changirai, but in terms of politicking, Morgan remains a genius in terms of opposition politics. I had a question for Douglas Monzora mm -hmm. where I said to him, with your performance as MDC president, do you think Morgan would be happy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was the question How did I had he respond to that? He says, I think Morgan would be happy because we are rebuilding the party. Now, in my personal view, I don't think he would be happy. Why? Because there wouldn't be a need to rebuild if you didn't let it crumble down in the first place. The last time I was at ZBC, you know, and uh, should have been 2013, um, around about the time that uh, Morgan was, was, was not feeling well. I'm not too sure about the exact year or date. Mm. But we were told, because these uh, leaders in the opposition had moved out. Yes. Your Washman Nube was with his green MDC. Yes. MDCN. You see. <laughs> uh, Tendai Biti was with his orange mm. MDC, the PDP, People's yes. Democratic Party. Yes. And uh, 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 Job Sikala was with his MDC 99. Yes. Douglas was still with the MDC-T yes. then. Chamisa was with the MDC-T. And we were told that on his deathbed, the splinter leaders were brought together by Changrai and they were urged to come together. It might have been for the 2018 election. Okay. To come together for the purpose of salvaging and saving the opposition for it to be very effective against ZANU PF. But this has not happened. Yes. After his death, his demise, 
we see it fractured more. Yes. Your sentiments? I think the issue to do with these leaders is that they need to come to peace. And I think this would be a very controversial statement, but I think they need to come to, uh, to peace with the term, with the fact that Nelson Chamisa is more popular than all of them. Hence, what Should they, he go it alone? Popularity, he, yes. Yes. Should he go it alone? Should he exclude all these other guys? No, he should not, because you need these guys. That's the thing. These guys need to come to together and find a way to work together. I think that's the only way we would have an effective opposition because at the end of the day, for the so-called democracy to work, we need two opposing voices. That's healthy politics. The most dangerous thing that has been said about Nelson Chamisa in as much as you would win any popularity contest within the, MD, the, the opposition political movement is he's got dictatorial tendencies. And some are accusing him of being a zealot in terms of religion, using yes. religion for his own benefits. And hence, he's secluding any imagined threat yes. from these powerful big guys who were with the opposition in its formative stages. That's why he's allowing himself to yes. be surrounded by these newbies. Your sentiments? Does Nelson Shamisa exhibit uh, dictatorial uh, traits? Yes, he does. I, I always tell of a story where we attended uh, one of his last rallies at Robert Mugabe Square, where he was calling up his leaders to speak. The way he conducted himself with his MPs that are yet to be elected showed a man that thought he and he alone could go at it. Then we talk of his popularity. Yes, he can win a, popular, a popularity contest. Yes, he shows traits of being a dictator. He is too nervous about betrayal. He is too nervous about infiltration. Hence, he is done away with the old guard, brought in new blood. I'm not against bringing in new blood, mm -hmm, by the mm -hmm. way. I'm not against that. But Are you for a fusion? Yes, I'm for a fusion. Let's find a way to work together. That's the best way we are going to do this. Because you're looking at a Tendai Miti who has a hold over the Harare East constituency. You're looking at a Gift Siziba who has a hold over the Pelandaba constituency. Looking at a Fadzai Mahere who is loved in Mount Pleasant. Bring these guys together. You're looking at a Douglas Monzora who is a whiz when it comes to constitutional law. So bring them together, find a way to work with them. So as it stands there, the opposition is in disarray. We know not what is in store for the blue movement. These are the issues that we will be discussing in subsequent episodes of the programs as they are unveiled. I'm your host, Roderick Mashingaize, with my buddy, PJ Nagoli. PJ, so it's a pleasure hanging out with you, buddy. Thank you. And be sure to join us next week so that we discuss with our viewers on issues affecting you and us as Zimbabweans. It's bye for now.